It's Platt, and today we try a beer from Alaska. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So today the particular beer we're trying is Alaskan Amber. It comes to us from uh, the Alaskan Brewing Company. Um, a little backstory on Alaskan Brewing. It was founded in 1986 in Juneau, Alaska, which is the capital of Alaska, by Marcy and Jeff. <laughs> Check the notes real quick. Marcy and Jeff Larson, uh, they're a married couple, and uh, they still run the brewery today. So 30, almost 35 years later, they still run the brewery. Uh, still keep us kind of a small mom-and-pop kind of family operation, even though the brewery has grown uh, quite a bit. Uh, the brewery itself is the first in Juneau since Prohibition. Uh, obviously, anybody opening a brewery in 1986 was kind of ahead of the curve on the whole craft brewery movement, so they're definitely a uh, inspiration and very pivotal in the craft brewery movement. Um, the brewery itself produces seven beers uh, year-round. Uh, they are the 19th largest craft brewery in America, so they definitely built something even though they're in a remote uh, part of the world. Uh, they currently distribute to roughly 25 states or so. Uh, generally, in the western half of the U.S., I think Ohio is as far east as they go. Um, unique little story about their flagship beer, this Alaskan Amber. When they were creating the brewery, or when they were planning the brewery, uh, Marcy Larson decided to do a little research and discovered uh, some stuff about a brewery called Douglas City Brewing that had been in Juneau around the turn of the century, late 1890s, early 1900s. And in a newspaper article she found, they talked about one of the beers that that brewery made, and they even gave the recipe. Well, she gave this information to her husband, and he crafted uh, a, a beer off of that recipe, which became the Alaskan Amber. And uh, still to this day, that is their uh, flagship beer. Uh, being based in Alaska, uh, the environment obviously is... Uh, pivotal up there and so the brewery itself is very proactive as far as the environment goes. Uh, Alaskan Brewing was the first brewery in the U.S. to recapture its CO2. Uh, if you're a home brewer you know that one of the byproducts of fermentation is CO2 and Alaska Brewing recaptures that CO2 and uses it to condition their beer and also a little trick if you've never seen a bottling line uh, they will blow CO2 in the bottle to get any oxygen out, so when they cap that beer, you're not worried about oxygen in there and oxidizing the beer. So see, so Alaska Brewing utilizes that excess CO2 instead of it just kind of escaping in the air. They, they uh, capture it and use it uh, for a purpose. Uh, also something unique they do at Alaska Brewing is most breweries uh, take their spent grain and just give it to a local farmer and he feeds it to his livestock. And again, that's a useful way to do it, and it's better than filling up landfills with it. Well, obviously, there's not a lot of uh, cow ranches <laughs> up in Alaska. So what they do is they end up drying out their uh, spit grains and then uh, using it in their uh, the boiler in the property, and they use that to heat the property and, uh, and for electrical needs. They end up cutting back their energy expenses 65%, so it helps save their energy use. So um, Alaska Brewing, proactive as far as uh, environmental uh, issues go. Well, before we try the beer though, let's check out the stats. So before we uh, try this beer, I have to give a little bit of disclosure. Uh, I was actually born in Alaska. My father was stationed up there. Uh, when he's in service, we left when I was six months old, so I haven't been back. But Alaska's always had kind of a warm spot in my heart. So I thought I would give you a few fun facts about Alaska. Uh, first fun fact, 17 of the 20 tallest mountains in the U.S. are in Alaska. Uh, a lot of mountains up there. Uh, there are all, roughly 100,000 glaciers in the state of uh, Alaska covering roughly about 5% of the area of Alaska. If you know how big Alaska is, that's quite impressive. Um, the Northern Lights um, are visible in uh, Fairbanks roughly 243 days a year. So there's a good chance you go to Fairbanks, you can see a good little light show. Uh, Juneau, the capital of Alaska and home to Alaska Brewing, 
uh, has no roads in and out. The only way you can get to Juneau is either by boat or by plane, but you're not driving there. And finally, there is one bear for every 21 people in Alaska. So I guess each neighborhood gets their own bear or something like that. Well, those are just a few little fun facts, but enough talking about Alaska. Let's drink uh, some beer from Alaska. Oh, there's a nice amber color. Uh, I want to say a shade darker than like a Samuel Adams. We got a nice about finger with light khaki head. Got a little malt on the nose. Let's give her a try. Oh, it's nice. Very nice. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of a Shiner Bach. Um, I know this is a uh, style-wise more like an alt, a German alt beer, but um, you know those German alt beers, um, especially more amber color, whatever, have kind of a Vienna lager, which is what Schneider Bach, even, even though they use the term Bach, it's more of a Vienna lager because the lower ABV. Um, we're we're at five point three on this one, so. Most box be at a six, so there's just a little lower than that, but it's in that v same vein of just a very nice, uh, drinkable beer. Um, a little malt forward, uh, balanced, uh, body's medium, um, yeah, medium. I wouldn't go medium plus, medium body, uh. Plenty of malt. Uh, you get a little bit of some of the. You're not getting chocolate or whatever those dark malt notes, but you're getting more of a like caramel, um, a really good toasted bread notes. Um, yeah, this is a nice drinker. Um, this would be a beer. I would suggest again. If you've got friends that aren't craft beer people, but you want to get them out of their, you know, American light lager thing, this could be a beer you could you could move them into. Um, uh, especially, I see this being a f more fall type beer. Um, we're in spring now, but still very, still light enough body wise where you can drink it when the weather warms up a little bit. Overall, decent beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. Any questions, comments, concerns, or beers you would like me to try, please leave them in the comment section or you can contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.